today we are going to be doing another uh, video about exposing the music industry as it was pretty popular from the first one that I did where we focused on Taylor Swift. Uh, today we're actually going to focus on a different pop star and that is Katy Perry. So if you've seen anything with Katy Perry lately in the news, you will know that there have been a whole bunch of um, things regarding a mental breakdown. And so we are going to look at this from a biblical point of view and take a look at some of her videos and to look at how the enemy is really using her in such a way that it is actually breaking down, um, you know, her as a person and we can really see the spiritual battle that is taking place for her soul. And we're going so, to start by watching a little bit of this interview where she talks about this new cover for her new album called Witness. This is with me. This yeah. The world is such a dark place. We have to laugh through it. We have to laugh through it. Right? Exactly. That's the only way to do it. And so she says this line, and yes, Katie, the world is dark. Um, when we are living in darkness, we are largely open to attacks from the enemy. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to ask speaking about... Speaking of the, laughter. No, oh. speaking of fun and enjoyment, uh, I want to talk about... Who, 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 what, is this a painting? Um, it's not. It's a photograph. Um, and... It's, Why does uh, it look, look? Looks like it's like it's like it's, it's got it's, spray paint. Well, just because it's a kind of a, it's been digitized. It's like a digital uh, yeah. take on it and stuff. I love it. I Thank it. you. And is that your signature? It says Katie. That's my it? name. And I know your name. Well. But I mean, did you sign that? Is that how you sign it? I didn't. Your name? No, I don't sign it. But this is the eye and the mouth. No, I saw that. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, because um, you would think if you want to see something, just open your eyes and see. Well, you know what? You want to hear the story behind it? No. It's, we have, <laughs> of course, I definitely want to, are you kidding me? I want to hear everything you have to say. I love you. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Um, Sorry. No, I think, you know, uh, sometimes when you see an extra, when you, sometimes when you see an extra eye, you would see it like on, you know, your third eye. And for me, like, through this journey, it's been a wonderful, incredible journey, and I've been able to share with you for over 10 years music, and Absolutely. I'm so yeah. grateful for it. For me, the wonderful thing is, like, the music has allowed me to travel, which has re-educated my mind and changed my perspective on so much. And so, like, my education and my consciousness comes from my voice. And that's how I see, and that's how I witness you, and that's how you witness me, and that's why the eye is in the mouth. Ha-ha! Yes! Okay, so spiritual blindness has really taken over people. Um, so, you know, she's had several mouth meltdowns and this re-education that she is speaking about plainly uh, really is the re-education that is done to these pop stars when they break down and that re-education is that of satanic strongholds that take over that person again when you know they try to break free from these uh strongholds um, and she uses the universe, this whole pushing the spiritualism concept as well. So this is a red flag because this indicates that she's actually a false teacher. And we'll get into this a little later about false teaching. Um, but so let's talk about um, how she's being brought to such dark places. And this concept of re-education uh, has definitely taken place. And, you know, it's very different from what she was saying less than a year ago. Um, so she talks about her music, right? And we can see her music is really being this outlet for her to kind of express this spiritual battle that's happening. Let's look at this interview where she talks about how she wants so badly to be the person that she was before. So you know with a lot of these celebrities, they're given this false identity. Um, so her true name was uh, Catherine Hudson and her stage name is Katy Perry and this is largely connected to the demons that are used to work through her right so as Katy Perry
and she talks about how she wants so badly to just be herself who sh who she is um not who satan wants her to be we do really need to pray for her um because she is struggling so much so let's look at we're going to look at some of this new album and let's look at by the grace of god um because you can really see that something changed in her so once she made it big she made it big again this just reinforces the idea that it was through satanic um help and we can really see this battle because you know satan um will use shame and she says that she felt ashamed you know through a lot of these events and he will use that as a way um, to keep you in that place of desperation so this war between guilt um that is of the enemy and grace uh, we can see is in the battle which is in her own words but let's talk about wide awake so wide awake um, you're going to see a lot of the struggle uh, between her and this demonic uh, presence that is trying to take over her life. So her line is, I was in the dark and I was falling hard with an open heart. So the enemy comes for your heart and she's outright telling you who won her heart in this case. And it wasn't God. Then she says, everything ain't always what it seems. So, which is true, right? Because this is talking about deception. Now, as you can see, she's in a barren place that looks like desolation. Um, now, we know the enemy brought death into the world and that this is where the desolation and destruction comes from. So she comes upon a fruit. Um, in this case, it's a strawberry. This is in reference to the garden um, and in reference to the biblical story of Adam and Eve as we saw Taylor Swift reference this as well um, but this is about the knowledge of good and evil by eating the fruit um, and you'll see this as the video progresses lyrics she says falling from cloud nine crashing from the high so again all of this is just Satan referencing his fall from heaven her spirit just kind of bursts from her body you can see that she's kind of brought into like a mental breakdown type of stage um, so this is all in relation to that because these celebrities do go through this and you know again this is controlling the person right so you'll see that this um, what this knowledge of good and evil essentially has done um, since biting the fruit as we can see as she's being wheeled through um, and then what we see these minotaurs and this is a reference to Egypt um, which is Satan's kingdom see the duality of the garden she kind of walks through and everything's all light and beautiful and you can really see the duality of what's taking place right this concept of death and desolation and then this concept of life and birth right so it's really that knowledge of good and evil that knowledge of you know uh, what Satan can bring and what God will bring So it isn't surprising um, that before this, she actually had a Christian album. So her name was Catherine Hudson, Katie Hudson. Um, and she was saying earlier that that's who she wanted so badly to be. And that little girl was a representation of her past uh, self as well. And the song was called Faith Won't Fail. So let's just take a little listen to some of this. different from uh the content that she's putting out now um so you know we really just need to pray for her this dark horse song is all about egyptian uh symbolism and 
And I want to give you some of these verses first about the Egyptian kingdoms. Um, so it makes more sense as we go through them. Uh, Romans one twenty three talks about how those who have turned from God, um, it says, and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Because you're going to see that all throughout this video, all throughout the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Um, Ezekiel 27, and I said to them, cast away the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Satan is revealing his power to you. He wants you to be afraid, but the truth is that he only wants to destroy you. And God said that we are to have no idols before him. So Aphrodite, um, as she so wonderfully references is a false god um, and this is mentioned in Exodus which talks about the plagues that came on Egypt and the story of Moses leading God's people out of Egyptian slavery so Exodus 23 13 be careful to do everything I have said to you do not invoke the names of other gods do not let them be heard on your lips so we, we shouldn't even be mentioning these other gods because they're worthless they're nothing and they're not of god then it has to be of the enemy so another important passage to reference is that of deuteronomy 32 16 they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods with abominations provoked they him to anger they sacrificed unto devils not to god to gods whom they knew not to new gods and they came newly up whom your fathers feared not so this is just reinforcing the concept that these are all false gods and yes this magic is all real it's not some funny joke you know it's not some disney joke right this is all very real witchcraft and the occult and more than ever people are practicing it and not even knowing that they're doing it and this is part of the deception okay so he wants you to believe that he is the most powerful and that god's grace cannot save you but that is a lie so that is the guilt part of this all and the only thing that god cannot forgive is blaspheming the holy spirit which is rejecting jesus christ now we can see her spreading her wings this is going back to isis the moon goddess so please know that god hates this and she is referred to as the queen of heaven in the bible as a false god so let's look at jeremiah 44 23 to 26 because ye have burned incense and because ye have sinned against the lord and not have not obeyed the voice of the lord nor walked in his law nor in his statutes nor in his testimonies therefore Therefore, this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, we will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. So, right, so this is really talking about this satanic takeover. And, um, you know, I just, I want to look at a couple songs from her new album. Let's look at Hey, 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 uh, which has over 71 million views, as this is from her new album. So the first thing that we see is this trumpet that says, wake the hell up. Um, I mean, that's an interesting choice of words, but again, spiritually, it is in your face and it relates to Bible prophecy. So Revelation eleven fifteen to 18, the last trumpet sounds. It talks so much about trumpets that are going to sound before the judgment and the wrath come on the earth. Okay. So the seventh angel trumpeted a crescendo of voices in heaven sang out the kingdom of the world is now the kingdom of our God and his Messiah. He will rule forever and ever. 
The twenty-four elders seated before God on their thrones fell to their knees, worshipped, and sang, We thank you, O God, sovereign, strong, who is and who was. You took your great power and took over, reigned. The angry nations now get a taste of your anger. The time has come to judge the dead, to reward your servants, all prophets and saints, reward small and great who fear your name, and destroy the destroyers of earth. So yes, the trumpet is sounding. You can see that she's wearing an outfit with one eye and... You know, all of this is pushing the feminist agenda um, as well as the agenda, which I know this is going to be offensive to many, but I'm sorry to offend. I'm more concerned with what the Bible teaches and what that means for you. Um, so you'll see all of the different uh, LGBTQ colors. Uh, so this is about how... Um, you know, this feminist agenda that is pushed for sexual immorality, where, you know, understand something, the Bible does not paint women as being oppressed. That is actually a lie. And I would like to get into that at some point. Um, so that, you know, there are many great women in the Bible, like the prophetess Miriam, and Queen Esther, you know, um, Mary Magdalene. I want to jump into this next part, because it seems that she's showing this broken side to her. So you can see that the egg is being cracked and she certainly does have strings attached to her. And it's interesting to choose the French theme because, you know, those who will be martyrs of the faith will be behead, which I mention in other videos, all relating to end time prophecy. Swish, swish. Uh, so this one has more than 416 million views. So please note that the we can see this symbolism right off the bat you know she's sitting on top of a thing of basketballs that are shaped in a pyramid and she's wearing a red jumpsuit and i want to talk about the color red because you see a ton of celebrities wearing this color and it's not on accident you can hear what the words are talking about in the beginning um that they don't know what is what like that is disturbing because yeah that's true uh, many people are deceived and it's a problem um, so let's talk about that color uh, the lady in red again which is a symbol um, in prophecy so it's revelation 17 the woman on the red beast so one of the seven angels came and spoke to me this was one of the angels that had the seven bowls the angel said come and i will show you the punishment that will be given to the famous prostitute she is the one sitting over many waters. The rulers of the earth sinned sexually with her. The people of the earth became drunk from the wine of her sexual sin. Then the angel carried me away by the spirit to the desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a red beast. The beast was covered with evil names. It had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and red. She was shining with the gold, jewels, and pearls that she was wearing. She had a golden cup in her hand. The cup was filled with terribly evil things and the filth of her sexual sin. Okay, so again, you can see this relation to the concept of wearing red, um, of being part of the red woman uh, beast, and her connection to sexual sin specifically so again don't shoot the messenger this is what the bible says um so she had a title written on her forehead this title was a hidden meaning this is what was written the great babylon mother of prostitutes and the evil things of the earth so again great babylon is spiritual babylon which takes its roots from egypt which we know to be a satanic kingdom so i saw that the woman was drunk and she was drunk with the blood of god's holy people she was drunk with the blood of those who told about their faith in jesus okay so again this persecution of god's people so first i find it interesting to have a team called the sheep um, which have a wolf over it and the bible describes this as a wolf in sheep's clothing um, matthew seven fifteen says beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves so she's kind of telling you that she's a false prophet right and we shouldn't be listening to her the symbolism's right there 
So another one in the basket, another one in the casket. It's actually really disturbing because this is the enemy revealing to you that these are souls. Now, another one um, who has been condemned along with him and his fallen angels, it's just, oh, it's just another one, right? So that's how he's looking at this. Then you see that their coach writes help, but it looks like hell, actually. Nicki Minaj comes in with all of her demonic presence and we see fire comes up all around and right when Katy Perry seems to be exhausted from it all, here comes the enemy to rejuvenate her. I mean, just you can look at what she's wearing, you know, including those glasses which show blindness. Now, she looks like she's summoning some kind of presence and she says, I already despise you. Yes, Satan, we know. She winks, which is a sign of deceit, and the Bible is clear on this. So Proverbs 16.30, whoever winks with their eyes, plotting perversity. At the end, she goes off partying after her victory over the sheep. Um, and the sheep being God's people, as he is the good shepherd. And all of this is done in her red sequin jumpsuit. The last song that I want to talk about um, is Chained to the Rhythm, which is also from this same album kind of looks like and she's in sort of like future world um at disney so it's interesting that uh the sign says oblivia um like oblivious let's pay attention closely to the words again this really looks like the old school uh, disney parks okay so comfort is one of the things that satan is trying to push onto people um so when we're living in a bubble we really cannot see as she says the trouble um because this bubble that we're living in is this kind of this lie so we are seeing life through um a lens a deceptive lens and she's kind of revealing this to you in a lot of ways um it does say in scriptures that god will send a strong delusion on those who have a wicked heart so if you're comfortable in your life, it shows that you don't need God and you don't rely on him. So it's interesting that she pricked her finger, this concept of desolation. Um, we can even see in Isaiah 55, 13, where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow, where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. So if it is... Her being um, pricked by this thorn, again, the thorn is a sign of the enemy. This is not of God. Yeah, so, I mean, the words themselves are very telling. And you see they're all in their houses, and it's this concept of the um, American dream, and you have everything you could ever need, and the one thing you don't need is God. So this is the message, folks. Um, again, we're stumbling around like a wasted zombie. Or on this mundane routine that has been sold to you that has never been how we were intended to live. So we are chained to this rhythm, right? Dancing to distortion. Um, this is kind of scary, right? So we're, he's, she's telling you that um, basically this is all just a lie and it's all just marching you right into condemnation and destruction. H2O, Inferno, I mean, we know this is the Inferno, hell, like, this is what she's showing you, this is where the world is going, um, especially if you are living in a state of comfort, which means we've become so far removed from the truth, just showing you another um, way that the enemy uses deceit, and it's through the television, the television is largely used for, you know, social conditioning and things like that, you know, so th this is really important to understand. Um, and everybody's just jamming along to it and they're being largely deceived and nobody is saying or doing anything about it. Okay, so time is ticking for the empire. Yes, time is ticking for Satan's empire and it will come to an end very shortly. Um, you know, this concept of time, wasted time. So it's all just in our faces. It's a matter of opening our eyes to it. So they woke up they woke up the lions um lion is the lion of judah so they're telling you that the um, children of god are awake and we are speaking out 
Okay. And many of us are doing this now. Okay, so I hope that this was all informative. And as you can see, you know, she's really being used by the enemy in a lot of ways. And it's really sad. And, you know, we need to continue to pray for these celebrities. The demonic presence over them is so strong. So um, please share this video so that anyone that you know who listens to her music, or if you listen to her music, keep this in mind because we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Satan is not stronger than God, and all of these things can be made new no matter what you've done through the powerful name of Yahshua HaMashiach. He's so good. And um, if this opened your eyes today, please seek God and repent of these sins committed against him, and you will be made new. The restoration of your mind and body is very real. The power of God is very real.